Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be, what do you think of me? It's obviously not the kind of thing that you want to ask somebody that you're dating. Think about it. Does that communicate confidence or not? Well, that's what this particular guy did. So he goes through his whole interaction of what happened here. He was dating this girl, been interacting with her. And I think he had three dates with her if I remember right. And so he's just been constantly second guessing himself and just basically in approval seeking mode. And you can literally see the negative effect it's having on this girl that he's been seeing. So he asked for my opinion on what he should be doing and how he should change his approach. So I have a quote that I wrote and then we're going to go through his email. And the quote says, when we do not think we are good enough, attractive enough, or desirable enough as a potential lover for someone we really like, we often will do and say things to talk them right out of liking and dating us for good. This will manifest itself as texting too much, calling too much, talking about our feelings too much, making future dates while still on a date, asking them what they think of us, constantly trying to find out where we stand with them, etc., This will cause the other person to feel uncomfortable around us, lose interest, back away, friend zone us, or start ignoring us completely. If you assumed that you are awesome, have a lot to offer someone, and that you are a prize and a catch, you would feel no need to seek their validation, approval, acceptance, or like you have to force your way into their life and heart. You would actually be focused on trying to determine if they are a good match for you and deserving of your awesomeness. Think about it. How would you act if you believed you were awesome, even though you might not feel like it, but if you knew you were awesome and you had lots of choices, you had lots of women, you had lots of options in your life when it comes to your career, negotiating, think about it. The more options you have, you're going to be focused on the perspective of what's my best choice, what's my best option. But if you've got no options, you're in a scarcity mindset and you're going to be fearful of losing the one choice, the one option you potentially have. You're going to try too hard. You're going to force things. You're going to chase things. That's basically what this guy has done. He says, hi, Corey. I have a couple of face palms in this for you, man. Oh, goody. I met a girl online, really nice and attractive. We were sharing texts and everything seemed to be going okay. We met on our first date. It was quite rushed since I was running a bit late. And instead of having dinner, we just had a drink and chatted. The date went okay. At the end of the date, we hugged. You hugged. Come on, man. And she said, hopefully, we'll speak soon in such a way that I knew she was interested. You probably have had to have been there. Well, I guess so. A day or so later, facepalm number one. I sent her a text asking her what she thought of me. You got your face palm, dude. You knew that was coming. And he and he said, "I don't. I didn't want to appear too keen, but I wanted to know what you thought of me." He says, "Dumb, I know, and I can hear your face palm from here." Yep, that was pretty fucking stupid. That's totally approval seeing. That's just basically saying, "I don't think I'm good enough. I don't think I'm sexy. I don't think I'm handsome. I don't think I deserve you. And you're probably not going to like me anyways once you really get to know me. So you might as well get it over with and reject me right now on the spot. So you can get away with shit like this when the interest is like 8 out of 10 on a scale of 1 to 10. But when it's it's really low, if her interest is a 5 or a 6 and you say something like that, you're fucking toast. You make up her mind. Because she wasn't that crazy about you to begin with. When she hears that, she's like, ugh. Not another one of these. You know how many times a woman has heard those kinds of things? A lot. And they run because those guys become creepy. They blow their phone up and they don't even want to give give you any more chance to become one of those because they've had enough of them. They're trying to avoid those guys at all costs. She said that she enjoyed our time together and was glad her first online date did not need the awkward balloon. The awkward balloon, that's the new one. I haven't heard that before. At this point, we were not sharing a lot of texts and it seemed I was initiating most, if not all, communication. No surprise there when you're in a fearful state and you don't think you're good enough. You feel like you got to force it because she's, it's any time she's going to be getting rid of you. That's what you do. 
you do too much. But if you're a catch and you have lots of options, you're not going to be in a rush to contact her because if you've got lots of options, other women are contacting you trying to set dates with you. Why would you – what do you think of me? You're not going to ask something stupid like that. It's like you're going to know she likes you. Why? It was like James Bond. Does James Bond go, oh, what do you think of me? Ooh, will you like me please? Ooh, please, please like me. We set a second date for dinner via text. In between our first and second date, we were sharing some text. Facepalm moment number two begins here. I texted her asking how the online dating was going, quickly followed by another text about how busy I am with work. The phone is for setting dates, dude. What the? This is what happens. You think you're being funny and clever and playing it cool, hey, Fonzie-like. No reply. Big dope. I know. Yep. I didn't follow up again with her after no reply and when the day of the second date came, she texted me and asked what time we were meeting, confirming times with me. Well, the good news is you hadn't done enough to talk her out of liking you at that point. She must have really been into you from the get-go. That's the only reason you got this far. We met for dinner on the second date. At one point in the date, I did ask her jokingly why she didn't reply to my message about how online dating was going for. She kept it quite lighthearted and said it was going okay but also made it pretty clear that she didn't think it was an appropriate question and decided to ignore my text. That's a rare instance of a woman who's giving you a fucking straight answer because most of the time they're not going to give you a straight fucking answer. But that's pretty cool that she did that. She must be really be digging you. In a nice way, she's saying, dude, you were a fucking douchebag. You expect me to respond to that fucking text? Come on. Come on. Anyway, again, the date was quite good. And at the end of the date, we made out. You redeemed yourself a little bit. All right. After the second date, I felt like I still wasn't getting texts from her. And I was still the one doing the chasing. However, my texts were maybe once every few days or so. While she was obviously either busy or with other dates or guys or did not seem overly interested. I didn't want to appear too keen. You must be from Europe or Australia. Probably the the UK or Australia, I would say. Or maybe New Zealand. We set a third date and she came to my place. That tells me she had a high level of comfort. I mean, when women come over to your place to make dinner together, they pretty much know that sex is definitely a possibility as long as you don't talk them out of it. He says, I cooked dinner and we chatted and seemed to connect well. I feel I missed an opportunity here big time since no sex. He puts in big bold letters at no S-E-X. But we did make out for quite a while just as she was leaving. It sounds like you waited too long to make your move, dude. I asked her to send a text when she got home so I would know she arrived safely and I texted back to say I was enjoying our time together. However, no reply. It doesn't sound like you waited for her to get home and text you unless she left that out. So I left it alone for maybe three to four days. Then there were no messages from her either, which isn't out of the ordinary. I'm certain there are other guys chasing too and I didn't see the point. Yeah, because she's acting like somebody that has lots of choices and lots of options. She's busy. She's only going to date the most confident, mysterious guy. And so she's acting like you should be acting. I didn't see the point in being one of those so I followed up after four days and asked her if she'd like to hang at my place on her next day off or hit the beach with me. She said she was busy this week and seeing her parents on her days off which was quite likely to be fair. I sent what could be perceived as quite blunt reply to that, okay speak soon X. I sent that a couple of days ago and at this point I'm kind of wondering whether I should pursue this girl or not even bother. Well quite frankly, I would wait two weeks and I would contact her one more time because she didn't offer any kind of counter offer. She didn't say, well I can't this week but how about next week? She's like, eh, I'm busy, I'm hanging out with my parents. Wow, she's really into you. So he continues on, there are a lot of fish in the online dating world, but yeah, I I kind of like this one. What do you think, man? Should I pursue? Well, you never want to pursue, but I would give it, I'd wait two whole weeks, don't call her, text her, see if she reaches out. If you don't hear from her in two weeks, then text her and just say, hey, 
I'd love to see you again. When are you free to get together? Question mark. That's what you say. That's why I teach in the book. And if I should win, well, I just answered that. I do consider myself a good catch. Well, then act like it, bro. I work out, I work hard, and I'm fun, I'm confident, friendly, and good looking. I know I fucked up a couple of times, but considering how the dates, day three ended, any thoughts? Well, you kept doing things, stupid things to put your foot in your mouth. So if I were you, I'd be reading the book 10 to 15 times. You've got to learn the fundamentals, and this is why. Your, your game is just not tight. And you can't be sloppy with a girl like this who obviously has lots of choices and lots of options because if you do, this is what you get. You get her wanting to spend time with her parents or she's busy. She's not willing to go out of her way to make time for you. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions for booking whichever option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon.